Hello, um, Rob here again. I wanted to make a new video about my covers pedal board because I was running individual stomp boxes just in series one into the other um, and I got this loop switcher from Moose Electronics um, and it's, I've just been super impressed with it and I just wanted to make a video to show how this has made life so much easier um, in combined with a few other bits and bobs that I've added, like this MIDI switcher here. Um, all of this stuff it has been really affordable, although I have built it up over time. So just to give you an idea of the signal chain, okay? So I have my uh, Mexican Fender Rosewood, just kind of see it there, Rosewood board, um, 60s telly, which is my really, really good guitar. I've been playing a, a lot in the last sort of year, I'd say. Um, my amp is a Hughes and Kettner Tube Meister 18. Again, I've had this for about two years. It's done every single wedding gig I've had in that time. It's really, really small, really powerful. It's really surprisingly powerful, actually. Um, and light um, and compact. It's just a brilliant piece of kit. And then what's great is that this fits in a really, really small uh, bag, the board. So I can basically throw. The bag over my over my one shoulder, the amp sorry, the bag in one hand, the amp in the other, and two guitars on my back, and go from the car to the gig in one trip, and it suits. It can do absolutely everything. It's an absolutely brilliant setup. I'm really really happy with it. So, what's changed from the last video I made? Well, almost everything actually. Um, so my signal chain is guitar goes into the uh, Mr. Crybaby Volume One by Dunlop. So obviously when the foot switch isn't engaged it's a volume and when the foot switch is engaged it's a whack. From there we go into the um, Korg Pitch Black Tuner and from there we go into the loop switcher and in the loop switcher is the compressor, the Moore Green Mile Cheap Screamer clone, the Hustle Drive OCD clone, the Moore Pitch Box and the Octopus in that order. And then it comes out of the looper into a patch bay that's in the back of this uh, unit which also has a send and return um, coming out of one place. So I have the output going into the amp and a send and return which has only the M5 in it. So that's going into the loop of the amp. And the other thing I have is this NUX MIDI switcher. So this is a channel switcher which I'll, I'll get into in a little bit. But it has a stereo jack that comes out of the back, again goes into the patch bay. So. I have my output, my send and return, and my foot switch all coming out of one place in the back of my board, which goes in one cable that I've cable tied together um, from my board to my amp, and it's really long, so I can set up wherever I want on the stage. So it works really well, and it's really quick. Um, I'm powering everything with this Joyo, well, K line actually, um, it's a clone of the Joyo power supply, which has seven. 120 or 100 milliamp outputs one high voltage output for the m5 or in this case i'm using it for the moose electronics switcher and then it has a 12 volt out and a 18 volt out and this compressor is 18 volts so it's really handy you can power lots of different stuff i have the m5 running off of its own power supply and it will actually power everything because there's enough milliampage between the seven outputs but I just find that the only way that the M5 runs that's not noisy is when it's running off its own power supply. So that's everything. Um, so I'll bring you through a couple of different sounds that we have going on. So obviously all the pedals are always on. Um, if I go to the green mode here, um, let's get to that here, I think. Here. And I turn this up. These five switches on the looper in the green mode just turn individual loops on and off. So there's a bit of reverb that's permanently on on the amp. So I don't need a reverb pedal for that specific reason, which is great. The first one is the compressor. It's a, like it's an inexpensive compressor. Massively heavy compressor, you can kind of hear it on the on, when I hit down. I like the way it works actually. It's, it, again, it was really inexpensive, and I got a second hand off adverts, and it just does what I wanted to do quite, quite quite well. Second is actually the octopus. So 
it's, it's really, really noisy, but I do have a, on my presets I have a noise gate that comes on, but I only use this for one thing, and that's... I have the... It's nice, actually, because it has a thing where if you flip the switch, it turns into an octopus. I don't use it for that in this band. It's really noisy, like I said, but I just like the way it sounds. It's just a small footprint, enough level and more gain than you'd ever need, kind of fuzz, and I, I like it, it gives me something to go to if I want something that sounds a bit different. So that's that. In the third loop I have, I think, to choose from. Sorry, I tell a lie, I have the pitch box. I've only just put this together. So the pitch box is obviously a pitch shifter and a harmonizer, um, but it also has a detune setting, which gives this really, really subtle chorus that I really, really like. Fills out the sound without making it sound 80s. Really like that. Um, it can do loads of other stuff, but for this band, I keep I use it purely for that purpose. In the fifth loop, I definitely have the tube screamer. It sounds like the level is dipping on that. But when I use it, I use it in conjunction with the other channel in the amp, so it has the right amount of level for that. In the last loop, and there's a reason I have it off, which I'll explain in a minute, is the hustle drive. It's just a great overdrive. Level. But I leave it off, and I'll tell you why when I'm going through the presets. So, that's all the different five pedals in the loop. And at the moment, there's a reverb on, on the spring reverb on on the M5. So, if I went to the blue mode by hitting this bank switch, and I go to my first patch, I have the compressor, the pitch box, and this is where I'll explain the MIDI functionality. Right, so, I have a MIDI cable. It's amazing that this thing includes MIDI for the for the price it was. Just really, really amazing. I'm not going to say how much it was in case Moose wants to charge a bit more for them, but just suffice to say it was very affordable. Um, the MIDI cable comes out of this uh, loop switcher. It goes into this NUX PMS2 MIDI switcher, which I think are about maybe 40 quid off of eBay. And what it is, it's three TRS jack outputs, each of one, each of which is, is here. One, two, three, four, and five, six. So TRS obviously means it switches two functions at once. I'm only using one. I'm using five and six. Um, and what it does is, as I switch presets, it changes channels on my amp. So what happens is, I switch here, you can see that light comes on. If I wanted to, to leave that on the clean channel, I'd just turn that off and hit save. And then every time I went to the second switch, it would do that. So there's a lead that comes out of the back of here that goes into my patch bay down here. So all four cables come out of the same place. It's just a brilliant piece of kit. Um, and it's so simple to use. I really, really recommend anyone who has any sort of loop switch or even a multi-effects unit like a boss unit or a line six unit that wants to change channels on a ramp. This works brilliantly well. Um, so, I, my first patch that I have set up, I have a noise gate on on the M5, so it's completely silent. Um, I've got the compressor on, and I've got the pitch box on, and I've got a little bit of a spring reverb from the amp. And the compressor works really nicely because it works really nice for fingers, like not finger style, but kind of picking stuff like. That. Or just everything I needed to do, you know. For yeah, really liking that. Um, so that's the first patch. It's lemon squeezer, pitch box, reverb from the M9, and clean channel on the amp. Now, when I switch to the second switch, you'll see that the M5's display changed. I can't get the angle with my laptop because I don't have a camera yet, but it's changed to an analog echo, which is just really, really short. It's changed to the dirty channel on my amp, which I have wound down a little bit here because I'm still playing in bedroom volume. 
and that's it just those two things the dirty channel of my amp and the compressor is off and the analog echo and this is what it sounds like <laughs> Basically, my rhythm sound. So that's just the basic rhythm sound that I use for pretty much everything. A lead sound. Um, so got the compressor, the tube screamer, and the dirty channel amp. So like this. fluid and stuff. You can really hear the mid boost off the green mile there. It's really um, I've got a longer delay um, again it's just an analog echo on the M5 a longer delay so it's a longer gap but still short feedback but a longer time. And I have a lot of the bass scooped out of that because I find the bass in my delay when I'm playing lead parts to make it sound flubby. Next sound I have is U2 stuff. Um, obviously it's handy to have the tap tempo on the M5, so I have it on the shelf so that's accessible. So I have a dotted eight dialed in um, for the U2 stuff, so That's the dotted eight thing. Down the end, I have the fuzz by itself with an echo. Just does that one thing. So, like I said, super compact, super handy. Not as complicated as it looks. The MIDI stuff is really, really simple to use. Basically, what happens is every time I'll just go back to a less noisy patch. Every time I change, so because it starts in green, if I go to blue, the first this is automatically going to sound program change to to the M5 and to this. But once I set them to be what they are for this particular sound it recalls them same thing goes to three four five six and then when i go to the next bank it goes the fuzz is on there but it goes 12 13 14 15 so it really is very easy to use and that is sort of that <laughs>